the JVC KD85 stereo cassette deck from 1978. Per JVC's marketing description, the JVC KD85 stereo cassette deck always lets you make a perfect recording. Damage to tapes and mechanism is also avoided. Besides that, the JVC KD85 is a beautiful machine to behold. It's a visual pleasure, a JVC design coup, which among other extras include a spectral peak indicator. Superb specifications include a 30 to 16 kilohertz frequency response with chrome tape, a better than 56 dB signal to noise ratio with ANRS off, and 0.05% WRMS wool and flutter. Those figures are roughly comparable to open reel performance parameters. The KD85 uses the best mechanism ever conceived for a cassette deck, the two motor ID mechanism. In this configuration, two motors are employed to ensure stable tape transport, a frequency generator servo motor for capstan drive, and a DC motor for reel drive. Because each mechanism operates independently of the other, and because its operation is thus simplified, the KD85 achieves a very, very low wall and flutter of less than 0.05% WRMS. Full logic control of the KD85 is the job of three dependable TTLICs, one custom made MSI type and two TTLICs. These controls permit direct changing of modes with a light push of buttons which requires only a 6mm stroke. Memory stop facility is also included. Now that is a kind of out of the way. Again, that is directly from JVC. Okay, not from me. Now, things from me are, first of all, my build impressions or my thoughts of the build impressions. 22 pounds almost, and that's without the case. Probably add another two pounds or so for the case, and you're getting closer to 24 to 25 pounds for a cassette deck. That's unheard of. This has to be one of my more heavier, if not the heaviest, cassette deck I've had in my experience. Okay. Uh, dimensions are your typical, um, you know, 17 inches across by about approximately almost uh, 7 inches in height and about approximately close to 14 inches in depth. The connection complement is nothing more than a set of RCA for both line input and line output. Of course, in the minus 10 dB V range. Balance is not supported. This is a consumer machine, not a professional machine. Okay. The other thing that this will incorporate is the ability of a customized DIN connector that runs the JVC exclusive remote control operation for the transport exclusively. It will not control anything else other than the transport modes. So that is also incorporated on the rear apron or rear panel of the JVC unit along with its ID tag, serial number, so on and so forth. Okay, This is fully worldwide compliant. Obviously the technician who is assembling this must assemble it for the appropriate frequency and voltage for that specific country or region. Okay, A couple of other details on this. There is very, very little plastic on this machine. There's basically a, a bit of plastic over the VU meter and the spectral peak indicator and a piece of plastic for the uh, cassette well uh, cover door, if you will. Otherwise, everything is milled aluminum and um, it's pretty solid. Now, some of these will be molded uh, over a plastic core, if you will, uh, but for the most part, uh, this really is absolutely a, a joy to handle. Uh, all the controls are very tactile. The uh, toggle switches have a very positive action to them. The, uh, the dual gang volume control for the line level, as well as the mic level, is a joy to use. It's a very, very smooth operating uh, dual gang potentiometer. This cassette deck is going to be the only one that I have that has true line to microphone mixing. This is very rare in all the machines that I've ever had come across. All of them typically will be either line input or microphone input exclusively, uh, but they'll never mix the two. This one changes the game. You have kind of an impromptu um, mixer, if you will. Uh, you're probably going to want to use a fairly efficient microphone. At least in my experience, most cassette decks have rather, let's just say, middling microphone preamp or fire performance, and I don't expect the JVC to be any different. 
Um, the thing that is amazing about the JVC is, really frankly, it's luxurious feel. That's the number one thing. Scale of uh, 0 to 10, this is easily a 9 to 10, depending upon what your expectations are. I think it's a, it's a lot more elegant to look at than some of the even more uh, luxurious and capable machines that are out there. There are many machines out there that will beat this. There's, there's no question about it. Uh, pick it from Nakamichi, Studer, uh, as well as even later in the line of JVC's own product line, some of the DD series, uh, the KDA8, for example, will just swamp this machine. But it's not nearly as a luxurious experience to use as this guy is. This one really reminds me of kind of, if you will, uh, a 90s S-Class. It just really does. It's very chunky. It's very solid. It has that very chunky W-Series body feel to it. Uh, and at the same time, that elegance. It's almost like a Lexus kind of also elegance, too, on the, on the controls. Very silky, silky smooth, very deliberate, and a very tactile and, if you will, elegant experience. The cabinet adds a bit of class. This is a veneer. This is not vinyl. Um, I had actually taken a good close look. It's MDF at its core, but it does use a, uh, if you will, a, a veneer. Um, I'm not sure if this is rosewood. Well, it is definitely for sure a redwood of some kind, okay? But it is very well executed, very well conceived. Um, I inherited this cassette deck from a very good friend of mine whose father had passed away a number of years ago, you know, along with a, a DBX 224 Type 2 noise reduction unit. The two complement each other exceptionally well. Um, signal to noise ratio of any cassette deck or dynamic range is exceptionally limited. And the DBX just really brings it into the fore of a much more modern expectation in the area of performance of dynamic range and signal to noise. So I'm very, uh, if you will, uh, pleased with that. Um, the JVC also has a little bit of a personal connection with me from all the time when I was in a, a junior high, all the way, what I call it, middle school now, all the way to high school, and then past all that. Um, their machine had always been one of my favorite machines to, to use. I think the KDA-8 was probably one of my favorite machines. I believe they had one that was called the 1690 or the 1950. That was another one that was uh, brutishly made. It was almost... If Arnold Schwarzenegger was making a cassette deck, this would be it. It was like a tank. Uh, it, it probably stood easily four units tall. Um, and this probably weighed, again, probably maybe a fifth to maybe a third more than the, this JVC KD85 did. It's a very hard machine to get a hold of. And um, if you do get one, you'll probably need to have a lot of work because we have to remember how old these machines are. And that one really is uh, what's going to bring me up to this part here. Should you get a KD-85. Let's, let's get that out of the way. I would say if you're a qualified technician or if you have access to a qualified technician and you get all the documentation, including parts lists, schematics, um, all the assembly, disassembly procedures, have at it. Um, I think you'll have a lot of fun with this machine. Uh, it has a, an elegance about it that you don't see on anything today. Everything about this one screams 1970s. It is it is a world-class quality product, but it's not at a world-class price, thank you. Um, anywhere from around, I've seen as low as $200 all the way up to the outrageous prices uh, on eBay. You can, your imagination will run away with that, so I don't need to embellish on that. But um, it's one of the very few machines that I've ever owned that made me glad I was around in that time period of the, of the 60s and the 70s, where tape was really kind of uh, the high-end solution and getting it done. So, really when you come down to it, um, sonically, I would give the JVC against my other cassette decks. It's a solid B. Um, against, say, my CR3A Nakamichi, I think the Nakamichi sounds more detailed. It has a better extended bottom end. The, the highs have a little bit more headroom and a little bit more openness. But the thing I love about the JVC is its honest mid-range. It's definitely a machine of a different time. It, to me, it doesn't sound like anything out of the 80s. And that's not a slight on anything from the 80s, by the way, because most of my cassette decks here are from the 80s. And I do have one from the early 90s. I believe that's going to be my A&D 6300. Um, and I love that machine. As a matter of fact, the JVC is sitting right on top of my 6300 right now. So 
If you are going to go after this machine and you are planning to do a restoration on it, be patient with it. There's a lot to do. There are a lot of electrolytic capacitors to replace in this. You're probably coming close to 200 of them. JVC had taken the art of coupling capacitors to a higher level, and there are a ton of them. Okay, uh, the, uh, the noise reduction boards, the transport, preamplifier stages, both I.O., are just chuck full of capacitors, a ton of them. I've already completely restored the power supply by replacing all the electrolytics in it. I felt that was probably the most critical one to do first. You know, get quality electrolytics if you can, so you don't have to do it again so soon. Uh, especially if it's going to be something you're going to keep for a long time and, and enjoy for a long time. Put good parts in it. Parts are cheap. You going after this thing over and over again, your time is not cheap. So do a quality job, put quality parts in it. and. Uh, you'll be happy from ear to ear. So this again, a throwback to a much more, in my humble opinion, elegant era of listening to music than today's MPEG-3 smartphone or mobile device listen uh, through all these repositories, you name it. Uh, it. I listen to them too. I don't want anybody to think I don't. But uh, this one here gives me a lot of joy as far as... Uh, how we used to listen to music uh, back in a time when I was a much younger guy, you know, and practically a kid. I was a kid uh, when tape was really king. A lot of folks will still uh, use tape. Uh, there's a resurgence in the high-end audio world of tape being the, the primary source, master tapes that is, typically quarter-inch uh, two tracks. So, uh, but the expense on those tapes and the machines themselves is astronomical. Uh, one single sampler tape can run you $400. And uh, we won't even talk about the tape machine that you might get. So, they're mechanical. They're a little finicky. They're stubborn. But when given what they need, I think just years and years of pleasure. A great alternative to digital. Uh, a great alternative, as far as I'm concerned, to vinyl. You call them records, right? I had my time with records. I will never go down that road ever again. It's just, to me, not practical. I don't have the space for it. I don't have the patience on the maintenance of it. And um, I just don't want to deal with it. But tape is that happy medium for me where I still get analog. I still have very good control. I have robustness in it. And it just does everything I really want it to do uh, that makes the music for me. I'm still a big digital guy. We're recording this all digitally. I'm not going to get this sideways. So that's basically it. Uh, is a uh, the JVC is my favorite time machine. It's really the best way to put it. Sure, I love my other tape machines, but going backwards in time with this one, it's a good time. If you do get one, like I said, be patient, give it time, get the documentation. If you have the training to restore one, by all means, please do. If you don't, you're gonna have to find someone who does because this is not something for the beginner. Um, there's a lot to do, okay? So that being said, I'm going to leave you now. Um, this is probably a little bit longer video than I expected, but um, I just kind of wanted to give you my little thought and impression of something of a, a bygone era from 1978. So again, concluding my thoughts, impressions, and experience uh, with the JVC KD85 circa 1978. I thank you so much for watching and listening. I, I hope that you will subscribe and click notifications. You just never know what's going to be going up on my channel. Um, I'm, wad I'm widening my portfolio, if you will, and the possibilities. So I do appreciate you spending some time with me today. Take care and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.